My name is Dr. Khalid Sibai. I am the executive director of Qatar Energy and the Environment Institute. Search project was uh, initiated uh, in 2009 uh, and uh, it is actually about finding exoplanet. And the exoplanet is about finding planets around other stars than our sun or the solar system. An extrasolar planet is a planet orbiting around a faraway star outside our own solar system. The three new Qatar planets belong to a category astronomers call hot Jupiters, planets very large and very hot. Qatar 3b, 4b and 5b are 12 to 17 times larger than the Earth and their temperatures range between 1300 to 1600 degrees. Qatar exoplanets need two days for a full orbit around their host star, considerably shorter than Earth's 365 days. Qatar exoplanet survey team is measuring the light of millions of stars every minute since 2010. If an exoplanet passes between Earth and the host star, the light of the star decreases while the planet transits the star. This is the signature of an exoplanet. The data is analyzed in Doha by the most sophisticated signal detection algorithms for millions of stars. And this is the original discovery signal of Qatar 4b. Right now we are in the fifth uh, place, but uh, in, by next year uh, we expect uh, to be uh, the third in the ranking. This is Qatar 3b and its host star. Qatar 3b has a temperature of 1300 degrees and is 12 times larger than Earth. And this is Qatar 5b, located 1400 light years away, or 14 quadrillion kilometers. That's 14 followed by 14 zeros. Qatar Exoplanet Survey is building three more stations around the world, in the USA, Spain and China. Qatar Exoplanet Survey will become the only team in the Northern Hemisphere and the second team in the world that collects data for 24 hours continuously, avoiding the daytime gaps. Qatar Exoplanet is already the fourth best team in the world out of 30, with more discoveries expected. The most important thing uh, of this discovery is just to remind uh, all of us in the Arab and Islamic world that we have, that we had really great history in this science. And everybody should know all the bright stars in the sky, in the best catalog around the world, all of them carry Arabic names. Nobody knows that. So, really, our heritage belongs there, and we shouldn't abandon that. We are, uh, the West is new for this science, but we are not. We have created it, and we should come back and with big force to it again. This should really give for our new generation hope that we are able to come back to our old glory. It is widely accepted that the car is probably the most beloved of all mankind's inventions and that the steam-powered locomotive triggered the Industrial Revolution and that the airplane and jet engine are two of the most important inventions of our time. But what is not so widely known is that these inventions include technology invented by the Arab and Muslim inventors of the Middle Ages. Mechanical flight is believed to first have been achieved successfully by the Muslim astronomer, musician, and engineer Abbas ibn Farnas. In 875 AD, after having perfected a machine of silk and eagle's feathers, Ibn Farnas took off from a high mountain cliff near his home in Cordoba, Spain. He flew to a significant height 
and witness accounts state that he remained in the air for up to 10 minutes before he crash landed. In 953 AD, the first fountain pen was invented. Tired of messy quill pens, al al din Ilah, the Caliph of Egypt, demanded of his court engineers a pen which would not stain his hands or clothes. Records show that he was provided with a pen which held ink in a reservoir and delivered it to the nib via gravity and capillary action. In his book, The Book of Knowledge and Ingenious Mechanical Devices, published in 1206 AD, al Jazari described over 50 mechanical devices, most of which he invented himself. Among his most important inventions is the crankshaft and connecting rod mechanism. The hand-operated crank was known in Han, China, but al Jazari was the first to incorporate it in a machine, thus inventing the crankshaft. Both the steam engine and the internal combustion engine use crankshafts to transform linear motion from pistons to rotary motion that can drive a vehicle forward. The first application of a double acting principle is seen in his ingenious double action reciprocating piston suction pump. Among Al Jazari's other inventions, the Castle Rock was an astronomical clock and analog programmable computer that could calculate the solar and lunar orbits while displaying the zodiac and playing music. In 1551, Takyadin Asadi, the Ottoman's most famous scientist, invented the first impulse steam turbine. High-pressure steam was directed at the bucket-shaped blades of the turbine, forcing it to turn according to Newton's second law. This type of turbine is still used today for water turbines and proved more efficient than other types of water turbines. Later, in 1559, Asadi invented a sophisticated six-cylinder monoblock pump. It was a hydro-powered water-raising machine incorporating valves, suction and delivery pipes, piston rods with lead weights, trip levers with pin joints and cams on the axle of a water-driven scoop wheel. And those were great inventions that still shine bright in the stars of science galaxy. <laughs>